people are obsessed with wanting to be in a relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. Obs I mean, it's an obsession, um, you know, I, with, with people uh, in my life, not in my life. You just hear people talk. Every song's about it. Every movie's about it. Why are we obsessed with wanting to be in a relationship? Well, you know, there's a, a beautiful feeling when you're special to somebody, somebody's priority. I mean, I have a puppy, and I mean, I am the biggest thing in her life. And just that tail <laughs> wagging, I mean, and everybody that she talks to on the street, rah, 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 I mean, they have the same response. Who doesn't want to feel important? Like you said in the beginning, we're hardwired for love. We're hardwired to keep the species going. But there is, I think that love gives our lives color and meaning and context. And it gives us purpose because we have a sense of connection. So then everything is richer. You know, our support group, whether it's our friends, our family, or that beloved person. Because that pink bubble where you go with somebody that is your delicious lover is so, I mean, there's nothing quite like it. It's the best drug. It really is. But, but then what's the difference between having a romantic partner and just having someone you love and going on adventures with? Like, why do we want that romantic side? We love excess. We're Americans. So most of the <laughs> world loves excess. You know, if it's, we want it bigger and better. Romantic love is exciting. It's thrilling. It's also terrifying because it, you know what's thrilling is terrifying. Am I right? There, it's the double-edged sword. So we want this, there's an inherent fear. They can hurt us, but they can make us feel amazing. There, hold on, I just have to do something or I'm gonna forget and I, I will talk for 45 minutes and I'm like, oh crap, we won't, don't get to hear camera. Um, what, um, if that's the case, the fear, right? That feeling, is there anything to people who don't find love in their life, in their relationships, because they're not willing to feel that thrill or uh, that scared. This is the number one thing that I have to work with with people that I coach. I get two people, two kinds of general people, the people that feel, and they feel too much, and they're trying to learn how to harness their feelings and develop the skill set so that they can go out in the world with an open heart and not be torn apart. Then I deal with the other kind of people that have got their guard up and they've been taught to protect themselves. So they're playing, but so cautiously that they're never gonna reap the rewards. And so it's the merging of the two. You know, we've got to, we've got to be intact with ourselves. As you said, we've got to trust our own wings. And that is when you become courageous. When you start to realize, actually, let me jump to the end. Yeah. When you realize that the only love that's happening is the love inside you, that you're choosing to give, that you think is their contribution but is actually your conscious choice, when you realize you own it, kind of takes the power out of whether they go yes or no. So if they run away from you, it's like, okay, I can love again. It, it, it changes the entire dynamic, how we look at it. I totally need you to rephrase that because okay. I'm sitting here going, okay. uh, uh, this okay. is, no, 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 let's go into this a little deeper. Okay. It's two in the morning. Somebody has left. You are crying hysterically. And you, know, you feel like this, oh my God, I'm going to die because I don't have them. All this feeling, and you have to say to yourself, wait, I'm experiencing love, longing, loss. They're not here. They're not in my dynamic providing this thing to me, and I'm still feeling these feelings. Then you realize, oh my goodness, they're my feelings. The love I'm feeling is my love. It always was my love. I simply attributed it to this other person. So I made them magical. They came into my life. They're the reason I feel love. I'm going along my life, I don't feel love, then suddenly they're there. Oh, now I feel love. So we think it's them. And what we forget is the ownership. It's our love that we've created, that we've allowed, that is simply, it lands on them. This recipient, whether they wanted it or not, they, we just gave it to them. And so, so that then we realize we do have power. So when you love someone, it's not because of what they do, it's because how you feel. You feel. You're the, you're the only one ever feeling. That's why, you know, you can love some people and they can't feel it because they don't have the ability to love. They haven't touched that place yet. So then how do you use that? When would you use that power? How do you use that power? And, and yeah, wh So when you're coaching someone, when does this power come into play? When do you teach how to use this power? I try to teach them that they have a lot more control over all of this than they would ever imagine. That they have the conscious choice to love. 
people think it happens to them because they feel like, oh, I fell in love. But if you really think about it, and you go back to that time that you fell in love and it just happened to you, there was a breath of a moment, just a where you let go. You allowed yourself to go. See, we don't want to take responsibility for it because if we take responsibility for it and we screw it up, then we screwed it up. So it's so much better, oh, they did it. They did it, right? It's their fault. They ran away, that's why I feel miserable. They took my love away from me, I can't love again. Think of the power you give them if they're going away, they took your love, I don't want to feel that way, but it took me a lot of decades to figure this one out. I had to stand in front of a big window in the middle of the night at two in the morning and figure out, oh wait, this person's not here and I'm still feeling love. Oh my goodness, I think I'm onto something. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So let's say you just start, because we are talking more about romantic love than okay. self-love, right? So you go on a date or you meet someone and you feel great about yourself. How right. do I use it right there and then to, to, even if that person never shows up again? I love the fact that you feel great about yourself because so many times when we go on a date, our whole fixation is, do they like me? Do they want me? And I think it's great that you start to say, how do I feel about myself when I'm with them? So it comes back to asking the questions. I feel great. I feel loved. Why do I feel that? What about that do I feel in myself? See, I'm a big fan of showing up just show up. I mean, if you're going to do it, just do it. Don't do it half-assed. Just try to really do it. Be there. Experience it. That's how you get the most out of it. For you. It's not about them. It's about you. And then when you show up as yourself, they get permission to show up too. It's this amazing thing that love catalyzes love. And it sounds like if you show up, and I present myself, and it opens you up, exactly. then it's up to you if you show up or not. Exactly. And, let's, and I want to make sure that, that I'm correct. When you say show up, you don't mean physically, hey, you're on time, right? <laughs> you, say, you, you show up on time, but you also, <laughs> you're, you're present. You're present in the moment. So, you know, and especially since I, I do have friends who are single, and they go out on these first dates. And actually, when I, right before meeting Lauren, so I exited a broken relationship. That's Lauren. Lauren, this is the woman I told you. Be the, careful when she's on stage. The cougar in the house. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, had a bro I, wasn't, I didn't love myself. I entered a, a wrong marriage. I didn't love myself exiting the marriage, and I would date. I was a serial dater. I mean, I, was, I went on in about a year period, 80 dates in that year. Yeah, but that's your learning curve. That what was did, my... Right? Didn't you learn a lot about yourself? I learned a that's, lot about that's myself. That's the practice. I learned a well, you're lot laughing. about he myself. He didn't? Maybe he didn't learn. So, I don't know. Oh. Here's this is what she's proud of. I went on 80 dates. She enrolls online dating. One date. It was me. I did the work for the family. Don't don't you worry. I showed up. So she turned the key and you raced to get there. I for actually, each, but you found each other. But you right? know what? If it wasn't for the journey that I took. Exactly. Exactly. If it wasn't for the journey I took. And I you know. had it, I don't have it here, but you had a quote about all the relationships. Yeah, there are no lost uh, or wasted relationships or careers. They're all a part of our journey. And it's all, it is purposeful. There, you know, the times that you think you're in the greatest chaos that's the moment you're actually being born. It's so wonderful, but you don't see it when you're in it because it's so traumatic. You see it in hindsight. So, which, which is what ha we both always say, we would have never met each other if it wasn't for everything that preceded it. Absolutely, it had to. It's the right formula. So, you were talk so now let's talk about heartbreak because it's very hard to get, you, you might have loved someone, you might have had an experience, right? And you wrote the, what's the name of the one, the audio book that you did? Uh, breakup Triage, right. so the Cure for tri Heartache. Yeah, cure for Heartache, right? So let's just say for a second, how do you, obviously you need the grieving process, right? But how do you move beyond? I, listen, I firmly believe that any challenge, our duty is to find the gift. If we can't find the gold in that thing that happened, it will always be a crisis for us. You have to dig. There are times you are really gonna have to dig for what was the benefit here, but if you cannot find it, it will always be the sword that impales you and not the scepter that enables you to be courageous. You've got to find something in that. So look, give me a hypothetical, uh, give me an example. Um, I, okay, I used to ask my girlfriend when she was in the revolving door of dating guys, okay, she, she'd, okay she'd, she'd go out and she'd meet people. And I said to her, one guy was blowing her off and all she wanted was a Saturday night date. Like she was getting Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, like that. <laughs> okay, right, everybody knows what that is, right? 
So I said to her, he, so he was backing off, and she, wa she was done. Her ego was out of it. She was done. And I said, are you completely done? She said, yeah. I said, okay, I've got something I want you to do. I want you to call him on the phone, leave a voice message, tell me one thing you appreciated about him that you would have never experienced had he not come into your life. She said, wow, I was never brutally honest with anybody before, and he allowed me to do that. And I said, I want you to say that. Hang up. That's it. I knew what was going to happen. 30 seconds later, he was going to call her, but if I told her, it would blow it. So she did it, blah, 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 and I want to thank you. Hang on. He calls back 30 seconds later, gives her the Saturday night date. Okay, that's not really the point of it. The point is, she found the gem, and it changed everything. It was her um, diplomatic goodbye. They really didn't go out again. It didn't materialize, but she found a way to walk away with a gain. So if you have a goodie in your hand, it doesn't feel so bad when you're walking away at the end of that journey, right? It's, it's the purpose of the gratitude slam. Yes, yes, if yes. If you can focus, there's always something to be grateful for, even in the uh, worst of times, right? Yeah. Victor Frankl, you know, talked a lot about, you know, the people in the Holocaust who survived. They survived uh, either, it, it was pure numbers, right? Yeah. Or they survived because they could find the beauty in wherever they could find the beauty. Everyone else died or perished of disease. And it's the same way almost with relationships, right? And that's the bravery that's involved in love. You know, we've got to realize that the courage, it, it is far more courageous to try to love somebody. It's far more courageous to allow ourselves to feel that. That's not a wimpy thing, that's a big thing. And you should feel very proud of yourself. And then in dating, we learn to be better sifters of who we should throw this beautiful emotion onto. And of course, we're gonna have some people break our hearts along the way so that we learn, mm, not the best choice. Okay, I'll try this one. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all part of the learning curve that you were speaking about earlier. Well, how many people come to you and they go, I fucked up, right? And how do you get them to realize, and, and maybe they did, right? But how much time is it, it's their fault or it's my fault? What's the ratio? If they come and tell me that they screwed up, they're halfway there, or more so. And that's, like, I've had guys cheat on their fiancés numerous times, and then they lost it. Like, how did that happen? I can't figure it out. That's a mortal wound for a woman. That's going to sting, right? They have to really transform. That can take me 10 or 12 sessions before I can get her back. But I write the emails and the text messages, so I'm the Cyrano. So. <laughs> That's like a full-service hotel, I mean, in relationships. Yeah, because you got to know where to get them. you got to go to the heart. I think you just got, like, a bunch of business <laughs> for that. No, no but, but, but another thing is a lot of people contact me, and they think they've got an issue. They're like, okay, I am so screwed up, and I hear what they have to tell me. I'm like, you're not screwed up at all. You're absolute, you're almost there. Sometimes if you're looking into a dirty mirror, you think you have bad vision. It's not like that. It, where are you putting your love and to whom are you giving your attention? If they can't feel it, they're gonna make you think you don't ha you're not doing it properly. So sometimes it's just that. Again, it's self reflect what Melanie just exactly. talked about, right? It's yeah. about being brave enough to look at yourself. And I love that you said to love is bravery. It's it's that vulnerable vulnerability. Oh, it's huge. To let someone see you for you. All right. So we are in New York City. And I hear this a lot. Here, they, here, here I have my beautiful friend, both men and women, right? Yeah. Beautiful, successful career-wise, you know, ready to find someone and say, I want to give myself it all. And man, even though they have everything, they don't have that. What the hell is going on in New York City? <laughs> okay, we have a couple things converging at the same time, but I have good news. So please remind me there's good news at the end of this. We live in an unusual time period. You have to admit, the last two decades have been harder than ever to get together with somebody. Am I right? This is unusual. So, the good news, bad news. The traditional standard, the protocol for what relationships are, broke apart. I was one of the people that wanted that to happen. Not the traditional doesn't work, it does, but you need a lot more for an evolving society. You need a relationship that has growth built into it. And I am a proponent of people creating their own unique love model that is authentic for them. Then they might have a shot to stay together 15 or 20 years. But at the same time, then sex got separated from love and romance and intimacy. So now it's a sport 
like getting a cup of coffee at Starbucks, right? It's meaningless. Then you have people having reactions after their hookups, which is normal because they have feelings, because they're integrated. Then they're learning to try and deaden themselves. Then you've got all these confused people out in the dating market that are very successful, that have never considered for a moment, I bet I do some of this stuff every day at work, and I've never extended the platform into considering this action that they've done in the relationship, meaning you have the skills of negotiation. You can do it in a boardroom. Have you ever thought of negotiating for what you want with a partner? You have the skills of communication. How well do you communicate with your partner? And if you saw a move that's really weird on the game board and it was maybe a competitor, you'd be able to say, oh, I get what they're doing. They want this and they're trying to get me to do that. But when it comes to love, you're like, oh, I don't understand. What are they doing? What do they mean by that? Right? <laughs> So we forget that we have these skills already, and, and then we can use them. It's just trans transferring it to another platform, transferring it to the platform of love. So you're saying a lot of people are not taking their life skills that they know to survive exactly. at the boardroom and exactly. lean in, right? And you have all this, and you have a big, mo and just speaking on the, on the female side of things, as a, as a, as a he for she slash feminist, whatever you want to call me, right? But this whole movement of leaning in as a female in the workplace. So you've got these skills and they're promoted, but you're saying they're not moving forward in their own relationships with that same set of skills, it, perhaps. It, exactly, exactly. And it's not exactly, it's not completely our fault. We've been told through songs and through movies that love is a mystery. Oh, it's a mystery. We don't understand how it happens. So it puts us always that we have no control. It's just like, it's, uh, like it happens to us and whatever is going to happen is out of our control altogether. So by understanding that some of the mechanics of love is a skill set. How do you communicate? Uh, what is your, how good are you at partner selection? Uh, things like this. If, if, or, or what are our goals? Like if you were in business, you'd know your partner's mission statement. You'd know if they're a good fit for you. In dating, it's like, oh God, he's hot. You know, d d like uh, maybe I should be, <laughs> right? Maybe I should think the next step, but what's he gonna bring to the table, you know? So when you, hopefully if you enjoy what you do in work, you find a culture that fits for you, right? You find a work environment, you say this place represents who I am. I know that she's, she's the first is here in the house, right? The two from She's the First, were they not, were they, did they make it here tonight? Nope, okay, maybe they're not here, but right, She's the First, an organization, and we'll talk about it in a second, I'll talk about it in a moment, but they have very, very clear values on, on, on what they represent as an organization. So do relation, do, should people be looking in relationships for the same thing, a set of values? I, I exactly, and, and I'm, listen, I like to tell people where I stand right in the beginning. I would rather lose you at the first cocktail than six months later figure out, oh my God, he didn't want a relationship. You know, what, you don't have to be afraid of it. It's, it's sort of like you're going, you know, uh, you have to know your goals, and then you have to see if the goals match. And don't be afraid if you want to get married, you want to have children. Why should anybody be ashamed of that? Oh, I'll look weak, I'll look needy, I'll look desperate. No, you're just saying what you want. It's on the menu. Just order it, right? I, I actually, uh, I'll just share this. I wasn't planning on it, but when I did meet Lauren, it was online, okay? And I, and, a, and I had a friend who was just like, you need to do it. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. But I, I was like, no. But I, and I thought it was weird because you literally turn the dials. You're like, oh, I want you know, this height and this income. And, it, and I'm like, this is shallow. But then there's like questions like, are children, do children matter? Like it, with today's day and age, you said it's changed, which is really cool. I never thought about it. Yeah. Over two decades, we've been living as a society for hundreds of thousands of years. And all of a sudden I was like, yeah, let's change everything, right? right? But I, so I literally just dialed in my values of what I wanted in a person, almost like you were watching the Jetsons, like, yeah. I want this, and I want this, and I want this, and I want this, and literally, she showed up. It's fantastic. <laughs> so it can work. But there was no, like, it, and I'm not saying, it did feel shallow, but I went, wait, but I deserved what I want. You took a long time figuring out what it was and getting there. So when you Correct. saw it, it was boom, right? Correct. Yeah. And literally, in the moment we talked, and she came, by we the way, know. I'm not even shitting you. Uh, it was J date, even though neither one of us practiced. We just wanted someone who feels pain in a humorous way. <laughs> it was uh, J date actually put us at a 100% match, and I and I kept avoiding her uh, because I just didn't like her profile at all. 
And then one day I, I wrote, and the second we interacted, it was like boom. And it's just, but it goes to show if you really are truthful with yourself, right? Yeah. And truthful with what you want, exactly. you can expedite that process. And, and at first I thought it was a shallow thing, but uh, there's nothing wrong in knowing what you want. No, and in romance, you should have what you want. It's mm -hmm. the one area you get to be picky. You're going to be all over that thing. You've got to like it. Yep. Really? <laughs> you know, just get what you want. and Don't be ashamed what you want. Say well, it. Whenever someone asks me, oh, how's married life? I go, it turns out if you like your partner, it's quite fucking good. It's great. 